This is a Fox News alert. I'm Brett Baer in Washington. President Trump considers options for military action in Syria. This comes following what is believed to be a chemical weapons attack earlier this week that left dozens dead and scores wounded in rebel-held territory. It also comes as President Trump hosts his Chinese counterpart for a two-day summit in Florida that will deal with another major troublemaker in the world, North Korea. We have Fox team coverage tonight. Jennifer Griffin is at the Pentagon with what an operation in Syria might entail and how fast it might materialize. But first, Chief White House Correspondent John Roberts at Mar-a-Lago Resort in Palm Beach, Florida with the latest on the president's decision making. Good evening, John. Good evening to you, Brad. When it comes to military action, an administration source tells Fox News that the president's thinking is driven not just by the apparent sarin gas attack in Syria, but by the escalating nature of the attacks in Syria since last week, ever since U.S. officials declared that regime change in Syria was not a priority. It appears to be now. The pouring rain may have been a metaphor for the heavy decision facing the president whether to order the first military strikes of his administration in response to Syria's sarin gas attack against civilians. I think what Assad did is terrible. I think what happened in Syria is one of the truly egregious crimes that should and it should be allowed to happen. At Mar-a-Lago, the president heard options for a possible military strike against Syria from Defense Secretary James Mattis and National Security Advisor Lieutenant General H.R. McMaster. In his press conference at the White House yesterday, President Trump said his position on Syrian President Bashar al-Assad was changing. Today, the president doubled down on that statement. I think what happened in Syria is a disgrace to humanity. And he's there, and I guess he's running things. So something should happen. That something is looking like a change in Syrian leadership, according to Secretary of State Rex Tillerson, though he indicated it wouldn't happen overnight. Well, the process by which Saad would leave is something that I think requires an international community effort, uh, both to first defeat ISIS within Syria, to stabilize the Syrian uh, country, to avoid further civil war, and then to work collectively with our partners around the world through a political process that would lead to Assad leaving. Regime change, and in particular airstrikes against Syria, are far more complicated now than when President Obama first proposed them in 2013 in response to the Assad regime's last big chemical weapons attack. Russian forces are firmly entrenched in Syria, leaving little room for error, militarily or politically. Tillerson, who will travel to Moscow next week, appealed to Vladimir Putin not to stand in the way of a U.N. resolution against Assad. And I, I think further it is very important that the Russian government consider carefully their continued support for the Assad regime. The Syrian issue took center stage from the reason for the president's trip to Florida, a summit with Chinese President Xi Jinping. On the agenda, another global hotspot, North Korea. The two are also likely to discuss Chinese military expansion in the South China Sea and how willing China is to level the playing field of trade between the two countries. We have not been treated fairly on trade for many, many years. No president's taken care of that the way they should have. And we have a big problem with North Korea. We're going to see what happens. On Syria, administration sources played down the likelihood that any military action might occur within the next few hours, saying that would be quick. Brett? John Roberts, traveling with the president, Mar-a-Lago. John, thank you.